let's receive Pastor Ocholi and his dear wife as he brings God's word to us. Come on, church, let's make it louder. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. A blessing to be with holding, you this morning. I was holding my wife and left my mic. No, you, you can keep that. You can keep that. Praise God. Oh, yeah, talk, talk. Let them hear your voices. <laughs> and we thoroughly enjoyed the worship this morning. It's, it's such a blessing when we fellowship with uh, other churches. If you want to clap, clap now. What is it? <laughs> you just know that the Spirit of God is one and the presence of God is here. And it was just amazing to relieve the love of God. Thank God for the way he has loved us. And I believe that God has so much in store for us uh, today. God is the author of love. And God loves when his children, you know, are able to love each other and grow great families. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I wanted to hear my wife's voice since I'll be teaching alone this morning. Um, I've known this girl for 20 years, so... Clap, 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 clap. So I met, I met her first day in university uh, when ABU together. And uh, some people thought that love didn't to cross the gate of school. But she's in my house in Abuja, right? So <laughs> praise God. All right, uh, clap for my wife. As she, she's... Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor Mrs. Um... And thank you to the leadership of church. Uh, as we were driving in, I just told uh, my wife that um, so we are stepping on a very great legacy. And she's like, my wife loves Archbishop Jesus Christ. Hey, God. Archbishop is a problem to me. It's a problem. My wife, the dimension of Archbishop men that have gone ahead but are still speaking. Praise God. You are standing on very solid foundation. Very, very solid foundation. Praise God. So we, we say a big thank you to leadership of the Lord is uh, going to do this morning would indeed uh, reflect what your expectations are of him through us in Jesus name. Ucholi Okutepa is my name. Pastor got my name right. Some people don't. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to teach very simple this morning. We come in the order of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul says, when I came to you, I did not come with just mere words, but with the demonstration of the spirit and power. So we'll bring the word this morning that way by his grace. I'm not a great singer like your people and even pastor demonstrated. But, <laughs> but our dear friend, Emmanuel Eko, keep standing, please. Thank you. Um, did a song that I love and it reflects what I want to teach this morning. So just bear with me as you stand. That's why I want you to stand because if you sit down, you sleep. All right? Uh, our love is understood by the things we say and do. It is not enough to confess your love. You must stand to prove you do. When you love, you're in a school. You will need to read God's book. You drew, you are to do. Give him the mic. When you say I love it must show in what Please be loving. you do when you say when you say I love you it must show in all you Turn to your neighbor and warn your neighbor now. When, when you say I love you, it must show. 
thank you this morning we receive your word with meekness i ask to anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language that everyone can understand this morning anoint the hearts of my listeners to understand better than i teach and deeper than the revelations i bring that at the end of the day our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory in jesus name god bless you, you may be seated whoa thank you lord jesus spices yesterday something happened that wasn't so palatable my wife is not going to be embarrassed, so I'll use it for example. When I teach, I try to be as practical as possible. So we have been ministering all weekends. On Friday, we had our program. Yesterday, we ministered somewhere. And um, Gladys comes to the house because she was to go with us. And Julia was preparing in the room. And so I asked Gladys, just like I asked our other team members when they came in, have you eaten? One said, she's, he's eating. Gladys said, I've eaten. But Gladys was just technically lying because Gladys was hungry. So I'm like, are you sure? She said, but I am hungry. I said, go to the kitchen and get food to eat. Now, Julia had made rice, white rice, and she had made stew. But in the process of making the stew, she had sent our daughter, Ariella, to go and get spices, cube, what we call Maggi in Nigeria. Maggi is just one brand, please. All right? She had sent her to go to the estate shop to get some because she just realized, like most women would just realize, it's out. So, Julia was getting ready for the meeting we were headed to preach yesterday morning and didn't add that particular spice to the stew I told Gladys to eat. So, Gladys ate pretend, you know, when you come to a man of God's house, everything is fine. So, Gladys did not complain. So, while we were going to come, my wife was like, ha, ah, I did not put the maggi in the soup. I'm like, tell Gladys that that soup you ate is not the standard of soup in this house. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? my wife in the past would have hesitated but I have trained her to be as brutal as me what am I hiding there was no Maggie there was no Maggie so it's not because I don't know how to cook it is that I did not put something in it do you get what I'm saying so when we speak about spices all right now if you don't spice things they won't deliver the results you expect now, let me say this to you before I get into my foundation of scripture, that God is the author of many failed marriages. God. Marriages made in heaven fail on earth. Why? When God is done with his part, he won't take responsibility for your failure. That's why Christians get into relationships that don't work. God is not going to marry my wife. God will give me a wife. It's my responsibility to marry my wife. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, if you have it in the NLT, that will help me begin in context. Well, I didn't check myself, so somebody please help me with my timing. All right? Wisdom, no, NLT. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Falling in love is not the wisest thing you can do. In fact, you don't even fall in love, you walk in love. Because there are, there are dimensions of what we call love. What the world commonly calls love is actually filio, feelings. And feelings are fickle. I agree with Gary Chapman that the lifespan of filio in a relationship is two years. So I've spent the last around 17 years knowing that this marriage, my marriage is not dependent on any other thing. Because I spent a lot of time working in it by decision, not emotion. He said, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Let me say this truth to you. When you see relationship and marriage problems, it's a wisdom problem. Village people are hardly involved. 
It's sense. People don't have sense. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, do you have sense? <laughs> Is there something in this your brain? Let me say something to you. Your relational life is as rocky or stable as the wisdom investment into it. The easiest way to check out village people is to be wise. The number of heartbreaks in your life is a function of your wisdom bank. Because there are relationships you had broken in. You had no business entering in the first place. Do you understand what I'm saying? You had no business being in it. That's why I tell people too many X's is a red flag. Because when you are approaching me with seven X's behind you, the question is, the thing that made you create seven X's, have you dealt with it? I'm up about to be the eighth one. <laughs> it's a wisdom problem. I, I get what I'm saying. So when I look at your life, you know sometimes a couple are just counseling with you or even people dating, and as they are all running their mouth, all you are seeing is a lack of wisdom sense you don't have. My brother, see, let me tell you the truth. If your babe can be collected from you, go and cry for yourself, not for her. How did you put yourself in a replaceable space? How? A complete man filled with the Holy Ghost, the collected woman from you. Jesus. My God. You want to collect my wife? Come and try. People were coming with a car. Me, I had legged these bands. The devil is a bastard. Because not by what you drive, it's what drives you. Yeah. What are you talking about? See, girlfriend is not scarce because you are broke. Because the problem with a lot of guys is that they are broke in their pocket and broke in their brain. That's a problem. That's a problem. What my money cannot do, my brain can cover. <laughs> hey! Are you ready? <laughs> are you sure? Yeah. There are three key spices. If you don't have, you can't maintain any relationship or marriage. Three. Number one, the spice of words. Man lives in a voice activated system. Voice activated. Why, is, why does he live in a voice activated system? If you look at Genesis chapter 1, 26, 27, 20 years, God began the project of man by speaking. So man is wired through a speaking system. He said, let us make man our image after our likeness. Uh, then God said, somebody say said. said. The project called man began with speaking. The project called man can only run by speaking. Then God said, let us make man. Why did God speak before he did? He spoke before he did because he wanted to cast a picture of his doing. Who was God talking to? This was God talking to God in a council of God where man was not so that it can be recorded for man so that man can see what God said. Then God said. If you read Genesis 1, you realize that God spoke so much. Why? Election is happening upon us in Nigeria. And I beg you in the name of God, regard the speakings of the candidates. Because God himself gave manifesto. God said, who was he speaking to? In the council of God. You were not there, but he was speaking about you. I'll show you something again. If you jump to chapter 2, go to verse 15 of chapter 2. If you can do that in the NLT, it will help. Oh, good. Then God placed the man he had made in the garden to tend it and to watch over it. Next verse. <laughs> but the Lord God warned, he's speaking again. The Lord God warned him, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden. Next verse. Mm -hmm. Be deducting my time from their delay. Thank you. <laughs> Except of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. What was God doing? He was still speaking. Next verse. Ooh, then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man be alone. I'll make him a helper who is just right for him. He was still speaking. Now watch this next verse. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Now watch this. 
God had been speaking to this time and asked Adam to speak at this time. And I'll tell you why he asked Adam to speak at this time. He had given Adam a picture by speaking and wanted to see if Adam caught the picture enough to know what to say. Because he had told Adam in verse 18, it wasn't good for him to be alone. So he was looking to see if Adam understood the picture of the wife he should be speaking. So he asked Adam, talk. He didn't tell Adam what to say. He gave Adam a picture and asked him to speak. Now, let me tell you this before I continue that. What I'm saying to my wife or not saying to my wife reflects whether I got the picture God gave when he said I should enter the oath of marriage. Because some people are abusing their wives because they do not understand what God has shown them. God did not give me this woman to abuse or to torture, but to nurture. That's what he gave the woman to me for. So what I am saying towards this woman, see, you can be a tongue-talking Christian and talking rubbish at home. Watch that. Because we are so used to, in the body of Christ, speaking right to God and speaking nonsense to men. That's why he began to warn in scripture, how do you bless with the same lips and curse with it? It confused the apostle. How? How do you manage to bring out sweet and bitter water from the same place? Because if I begin to see my wife as a representation of God on earth, by the way, God is both my father and my father-in-law because his daughter is in my house. So when I begin to see my wife as a representation of God, I would not speak to, oh, Apostle Paul says, henceforth, no, no man after the flesh. <laughs> I must learn to discern my own wife. <laughs> he gave names to all the livestock. Now watch this. Amazing. And all the birds of the sky and to all wild animals. But still there was no help but just right for him. Next verse. I will not talk for that. <laughs> it's after he's speaking decided against monkey imagine Adam chose monkey how would you be looking <laughs> how did he select by his speaking let me say this to you let me say this to you read your bible very carefully Cain talked with Abel when he smote Abel be careful who you are talking to some of you are giving attention to the wrong people you are laying up heartbreak for yourself in 2023 with your own hand. Somebody that does not qualify from Tete, from the foundation. You can, let me tell you, don't waste your time with people. Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> so the Lord God caused the man to fall in a deep sleep. That's not my focus this morning. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Go to verse 22. I'm being tempted to go where I should not go. Then the Lord God made the woman from the rib and brought her to the man. Do you realize at this point God stopped talking? At this point God stopped talking. When Adam was done talking to the animals, God caused deep sleep. In essence, you got the picture. You know what he did next? He made the woman. At last, the man exclaimed. Who exclaimed? Don't date a man who doesn't who doesn't see you as at last? What's the meaning of at last? There's a picture I've been waiting for. Now you be the picture. Not I'm checking the waters. Let's see where it is going to. If you want to see where it is going to be going. Be going. If you don't approach me as a prized possession. The Bible says when a man goes out and finds a treasure. He goes back and sells everything he has got. You are the needed, not the needy. Now you the need. He says it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper. Without you, I am helpless. There are only two persons referred to in that category in scripture. The Holy Spirit and the woman. My dear, as powerful as I am, without you, I have a degree of helplessness. At last, the man exclaimed. The man did not say, Pastor, you are very helpless. Though. Minus. You get what I'm saying? Sorry, sir. Don't be angry, but uh, I, I can see the picture of your help. <laughs> the express image of your help. <laughs> Praise God. This one. Somebody say this one. It's not a collection. It's one. 
It's exclusive. This one, not another. When people tell, see, it is okay to be toasted. My sister, when the toasting began, set your ears and hear it. Adam began this relationship with toasting. He didn't say, Thus said the Lord, no, I speak. He looked at her and spoke his mind. Some people are hiding behind the Lord and cannot talk their mind. Tell me your mind, your own mind. Do you consider me beautiful or you are just managing? You know, some people are asking out a sister in church after they have asked her the three they prefer. And they were rejected. So they are settling with one because age is not on their side. At last, the man exclaimed, This one! Be careful how you are selected. That's how you'll be treated. Bone for my bone, flesh for my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. Number one, if you spice up a relationship, your speaking must be affirmative. An average person on earth is looking for somebody to endorse them. Don't give the one space in your life to a person who cannot affirm you. Everybody seated there has been abused before. People have held opinion of you that, do, that does not sound right. Opinion of you that crushed you. How do you give the one place in your life to the one who can't affirm you? And that's why if you're married and you don't affirm the person you are married to, you're actually doing an act of wickedness. They gave you a space that requires that you affirm. As dirty as we are through the fall of Adam, all God does continually towards us is to affirm. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we tell people, come as you are, God isn't judging you. What is he doing? He's affirming the person. He's bringing you into a space where you can feel love where the world is not giving it. That's why more people come to Christ when they can just see his love. Not because he doesn't discipline, but because when you're affirmed, you just realize I'm worth it. I am worth something. That's why I tell you, if somebody's giving you low self-esteem in relationship, don't ask the Holy Spirit for any other question, just break up. You are supplying me low self-esteem. You are not godly. So I, I, I did a, a survey recently, a poll, and I asked people, when last did you tell your partner, your, your spouse, you love them? Some people say last year. Some people say I can't remember. That's a problem. Do you realize every girl felt beautiful until a stupid person spoke to them? Men, let me tell you. An average woman has body insecurities. They either want to lose or add. They are never comfortable. It's your, respons- it's your responsibility to help your wife know that I'm okay. Oh, my wife gained some pounds after three children, but I passed them through. She didn't collect them from heaven. I gave them. Then she began to tempt me. Say, baby, I can't feel myself. She will climb the scale. Oh my God, I say, leave the scale alone. In my heart, I was there, actually, some weight had been added. My sister, ah, ah, do something, do something. But there are things you feel in your heart, your mouth should never say. Ah, my heart was saying, do something. She'll be tempting me to join her. There are certain invitations you should not accept. She'll be saying, baby, oh my God, I say, you are fine just like that. Ah, she was talking one day. I said, baby, me, I like to be married to a woman that when I hold, I know I'm holding something. My God. It's a lie. My heart was saying, reduce small. Reduce small. Reduce small. But my mouth cannot say it. Ah, I have wisdom. My mouth, it will not say it. Let me tell you how my mouth was saying it. My mouth was saying it through my love action. I'll buy an exercise machine. Be exercising. You want to pay gym subscription? I pay. No problem. Just how I say. You want to buy someone so tea? I buy the tea. <laughs> me, I should open my mouth. You're already dealing with a problem. Now, let me tell you, some people will invite you to complain with them. They say you abuse them. So, and I women with that. <laughs> so, resist the temptation. Affirmation is the way. Sometimes, change your complaint to a type of commendation. Maybe I love the way you have, you have been taking your body goes so serious. Man, I'm so proud of you. I mean, the effort you make, only a serious person will make it. You are reminding her to continue. <laughs> so you spice up the marriage by your word. Why do I even know that? The Bible shows us a precedent of how to love our wives. He said, how did, how did Christ love the church? 
By washing of water, by the word. The problem we have in marriages today is that men are not talking because of Abuja rent. Bang, bang, bang. How's your day? Fine. How was what? Fine. When last did you speak to your wife? I give all the married men assignments here, especially if you have not been talking. After church today, keep the children somewhere. Go to Millennium Park. Leave the phones in the car. You just realize how much your mouth has been closed and smelling. Just do two hours work. No phone. No distraction. Nothing. Two of you, you just realize ten minutes later you are tired. You just look at your wife. What is going on? And yo, just like mama said, oh my God, when you leave Millennium Park, just go to Chinese restaurant. My God, my God. Two of you, dinner date. Aye, three hours. As I'm saying, three hours now, some people are just wondering, me and my wife, what will you be doing? Three hours? What? Let me tell you how much God is speaking to us in line with Ephesians chapter 5 as he washes the, the, the church with the washing of water by the word. Number one, do you know he gave you a big Bible? He's speaking. He comes to you in dreams and visions. He's speaking. He gave you the Holy Spirit. He's speaking. He gave you pastors after his heart. He's speaking. God is always speaking. How do you think you can keep a marriage fresh when you're not talking? And when I talked about the men, the women were excited. Not a lot of women on earth right now know how to encourage men in this difficult world. There's too much expectation from a lot of people and too much pressure thrown at the man. That's why their life expectancy is so low. Men just naturally die early. Because life is doing them, wife is also doing them. By the time you combine life and wife, it's over. you can look at him and say I see your effort let him wake up sometimes and just hear your voice Lord my husband prospers Abuja will not kill him you just, you just change gear of sleep I have a good wife I married a wife not a knife my God do you get what I'm saying you get what I'm saying words if your marriage were to survive on the value of your words how sick will it be you check some people's WhatsApp couple. The only thing on it, three things. Number one, fight. <laughs> Number two, errand. If you are going by, buy bread, buy Maggie, buy soap. Number three, bills. Landlord sent me a message this morning. <laughs> send I love you. If some people send I love you to their spouse today, their spouse starts suspecting what happened. Because they can't remember when last. Words say something, say something, say something. As I'm saying, now some people are doing they're going through deliverance, they're just wondering, I should talk. Yes, talk. Hope turn to your neighbor, say, Talk, talk. say, Neighbor, talk. talk. Okay, let's let's take let's take it deeper. And I'm not lying, as you are not talking, somebody is talking. You know, African men, eh, I don't know who do us. African men, we need deliverance. I'm telling you. We need to just come to GCMI, CGMI, Abuja, and spend like 30 days for deliverance. They'll just be praying over our head. African men just think we're the only ones who face temptation. We think our wives are just metal. <laughs> My brother, let me tell you, what your wife is facing, she tells you, you will lock her at home. Especially in this Abuja. She has seen car that can buy you three houses. Say hi, lady. You are a rented house. They have driven car near your wife. <laughs> one time I was in one committee. We were supposed to do appreciation for a man of God. So they sent us to go and look at cars in this Abuja. I thought I had car. That's when I realized it's carton I have. <laughs> when you enter car stand, I had 120 million. 100 and what? You mean two like duplexes in some area of Abuja? Is that one car that can catch fire and burn on the road? I don't give you a real life story. Some years ago, Julia and I were to minister somewhere in, I think we we're going to law school in Buari or so, somewhere far. So she wasn't going to drive. She took a, a, a drop and waited somewhere for me to leave my office and, and get her. We're running late, so we agreed to do that. This man with his bands stopped on the road for my wife. My wife with three children. You know, when my African mumu mentality thinks that three children, married, ring, I beg, nobody sees her. You are joking. The man toasted my wife. My wife said, Oga. The man said, She went to car. Which car? My wife stepped aside. The guy waited there until I arrived. 
What you are not doing, they are doing. Your wife is walking into office and somebody say, my God, humans like you still exist? <laughs> and husband don't insult her for her. No sense! Somebody just told her she's an angel, not even human. They just spoke to her, she's checking her wings. My God, I'm an angel. I'm an angel. You are here, you are doing mumu. Africa mumu. They are talking to our wives. Oh. Do you know, man of God, do you know how many women have come to me for counseling in this town? Hey, some are not talking, they are chatting. They are chatting. Your profile picture makes me feel like there's no beauty anywhere else but here. Ah! And some are not direct. Some just use affirmation. Man, the way you speak, your husband must be lucky. He's not lucky. <laughs> They're whining you. People come for counseling. They are the verge of getting into stuff they can't believe they will ever get into. Why? Somebody's talking, another is not talking. You think Samson took all his might and grace and dumped it at the laps of Delilah? No, she spoke him into his space. If your spouse or your partner isn't comfortable with themselves based on how you speak, you are failing. You have no business in that relationship. Do you know that's why the Holy Spirit lacks the capacity to speak condemnation to you? The Holy Spirit can't condemn you. He can call your attention to sin. But every time he does, he shows you a pass back. He cannot look at you and kill you. Yes, he can't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the blood is speaking. And guess what? The same way the blood of Jesus speaks for us as believers is the same way the covenant of marriage should speak for us every time we open our mouths. It's a covenant thing. Number two spies, action. Action. Because love is not properly communicated until it is received. Because some people have entered empty words. And especially in this world where people do couple goals on social media and fight at home. I always say, God forbid the day that my marriage is sweeter on social media than at home. That's nonsense. The true experience of this marriage is not what people say when I post a picture of us. It's what she says or feels about what I do. The real spice of this marriage is action. Let me tell you something I've been explaining to my wife and it's a very serious matter that Christians need to take note of. And I'm just going to tell you as it is. I don't lie to people when I preach. I just bring a clear conscience and tell you the truth. Why do you think some people are married to unfaithful people but happier than Christians married to faithful husbands and wives? Because the world has stolen our principles. In their sin, enjoy the principle. Do you know there are men living in complete sin but their wives are convinced that they, are, they want the best for them. That that's just a weakness. Why? Their action towards their spouse reveals a heart that wants to do them good. So they are quick to excuse that it's just his weakness. He's even trying. But this one is faithful, comes home at the right time, does not stay out late, but the treatment is telling this person you don't care. So why don't I have the Holy Spirit have faithfulness and actually show that I care? Because let me say this to you. Read your Bible. Marriage doesn't make two people one spirit. It makes them one flesh. Flesh is a sensory part of us. In essence, if I cannot activate senses by action, I'm failing. I must activate senses. In fact, this is like a cable network. It's my responsibility to change the channels. If you have DSTV, Go TV, or any of those TV things, the channels don't choose you. You choose them. You choose what you want to watch by a click. So you see this woman here? She's at the mercy of my action. That's why the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. How? The wrath is not potent enough to determine the state of affairs when I have the right answer. So a soft answer turns away wrath. You know, some people complain about their spouses and I laugh. 
How much action have you put into dictating their action? I give you an example. If as we are just preaching now, let's assume whether you're a good husband, bad husband, you just decide to just slip your phone out and send like hundred k to your wife. The way pastor's wife shouted, the pastor is about to say three hundred thousand. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, Mama is already reacting. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Oh my God! If I Pastor, I'm sensing, not in the spirit, in my flesh. I'm sensing it's like 500k. My God, my God, my God, my God. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you seeing the reaction in the room? Are you seeing the reaction in the room? Let me ask you this question. Are you doing enough for your partner to respond the way you want them to respond? Action. Marital love should be received as a harvest of seed sown, not demanded. I don't have a business demanding love for my wife. What? The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. So our loving him is a reaction. So Julia and I always teach the farmer's mentality to marriage. So what I want to do here is to sow seeds. Then sit back and enjoy the harvest. So sometimes I do certain things and my wife's going, oh my God, baby, what kind of man are you? Oh my God. I just pocket my hand. Yeah, continue. Go on. Columbus, scatter your dada. My God. Let me tell you, I will deal with you in this life. I scatter your dada. I, I, I have planned you for life. These 12 years of marriage were just starting. We're just warming the engine. My God. I did my first ever international passport after I married that's where I'm coming from. But you see that thing about words and action I was telling you? Oh. From university, through early stages of marriage, I say, my God, you have breakfast in Paris, lunch in London, and end it with a good Nigerian fufu dinner. I'm telling you, I'm taking the nation from the world. Nothing is going to, no gag will collect me. No standing breast will try me. I'm telling you, you people think I'm speaking raw. I'm telling you the truth. I'm, I don't care your shame. Do you have to teach you there for me? Do you know where we're coming from? You can't try me. You can't collect me. Nobody, ah, I look at my wife. You will not sow and another will reap. My God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even as I'm talking now, you see, she's shaking. It's, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Ah, you are hearing preaching. She's hearing personal affirmation. My God. Are you for life till I die? I'm telling you, even in heaven, when I enter heaven, after they confirm my name, the next thing I ask where is Julia. You know what I'm <laughs> hey! So she was telling me this morning, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, you pause here and make my boss in the Lord. Let me tell you where he is. You know, I can be very busy and distracted. Me, you look at that, so much ministry, this one, this one, that. See, ministration, ministration. But yesterday, I noticed that my wife was so mushy, 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 mushy. So in the night, I dropped my phone, the current second wife of every man's house. You know, I dropped my phone. I went to her, held down till she slept off, you know. Then this morning again, I realized that uh, uh, she left her side of the bed. She was by my side. So early hours of the morning, I just brought her to myself. She slept and slept and slept. So when she was dressing up, she's like, baby, have I told you I love you this morning? I say, you have told me. Say, yes, I love you. We're driving and come here. Baby, have I told you I love you this morning? And yeah, I know you love me. I know. You see, it's not nothing happened it's just holding the night eh? he just sleep on my shoulder <laughs> so that they pity the guest eh? how can I just be controlling somebody's daughter <laughs> action so some time ago I, I made my wife a promise and God has been helping me to keep it every money that enters my house a hand a percentage is for half for herself use not family the way you pay tight and you say she will not be praying for me to have money you are joking. I'm not talking family respect. A percentage as his entry as I pay tight, I'm doing that one. I should not pray for me. You are joking. So when I wear Jack, my husband is blessed. Continue, continue, continue. continue. Your share is inside the blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Action! 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 Move! That dating a babe. You went to watch a movie, you have cash, it was your car. You can't stretch 20 minutes and drop out before you head home. So you go and do it long. Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. You are dating again. You are dating again. So you do it long and be going. Then you enter your AC car and be going. We do it with angels. Action! As some of you sisters, let me tell you. Don't cooperate with Satan. 
Some things we call delay in the body of Christ is foolishness, not delay. When we got married, Julia was earning 10 times my salary. I passed that in October, we were married in December. So even the family visit we did, I did as a copper. Hello. I married through family support. Because the person I was working for was my biological father. He was the one paying me that kind of stuff. I'm first child, first son. So when it got tough between me and him, my pastor's wife knocked my head. I said, something wrong with you. If your father does not marry for you, who should marry for you? And I got a point. What's he doing with his money? But I'll tell you the flip side of the story. Julia and I decided to start where we were. Some of you need to talk to your parents to calm down in the nonsense demands they are putting in wedding. Because in Africa, wedding is more expensive than marriage. Action! Show this man. See, let me tell you the truth. The man should love true resources like I've been describing. But if you are looking for a man and placing demand on his resources as a condition, you don't know what marriage is. Please go and read the Proverbs that one woman who was not filled with the Holy Spirit like you are. When you read about that woman, it appears the husband needing, to, needing the job. He didn't have to work for her industry. Action. Because when we speak like this, women just look at men. I was teaching yesterday and I told them this story, I'll repeat it. I bought this ring 150 naira. This is not my wedding band. 2009. I was a copper in this committed relationship. My wedding was coming forth. Girls were disturbing me. As you can see, I'm very handsome, tall, dark, handsome, anointed. You get what I'm saying? Girls were disturbing me. We were going to Mina for football competition. Of course, I'm athletic. I play football. You know, I still play football. Mm -hmm. I have boots currently. No club assigned me, but Chelsea can be so desperate and come for me. I wonder. <laughs> Can I say? So I was going to represent Benway State in football competition. We are Benway Links Park in McCordy. And I saw this malam with a ring. I don't know why it has not faded. I've gone everywhere. I've gone with this ring. I've bathed with this ring. I've done everything with this ring. And I'll tell you part of why this is now my wedding band. So I've been wearing this since 2009. 150 naira. If Julia demanded a stone from me, I would have stoned her. Hey, give me, give me. Hey, hey. That's how I was. We went somewhere to minister when the red carpet. The MC, I be the host. All the call people on red carpet, host of the red carpet. Asked me what are you wearing. I said I'm wearing clothes. <laughs> me made in the image and likeness of God. You want to limit me to a designer so that I start having low self-esteem and problem. Cause I didn't even know the name of what I was wearing. Where they bought it from? Just like this fine shirt I'm wearing now, you think it's one designer? My wife went to tailor. They sold it. She sold many shirts for me. If you want the name of the tailor, meet my wife. But when I wear that, people are like, I like your shirt. They saw her in Abuja. Stone. The first ring I gave her, 2005, after she had committed to me as a student, I would never forget. Mr. Biggs, Zaria. It was her birthday, July the 22nd. I bought it for me, Malam. I said, since you have agreed for me, a mark of my commitment, I'm a bloody student, but I'm not going to let go. We don't know where that one is. After the traditional in Zone 6, Abuja here, we got some money. But knowing our state, we decided what to do. We went to Wuse Market together and bought a GL thing. The man called it GL. It was 20K. It's right now archived as part of the stories we tell our children. Because less than three months into the marriage, it's in the wash. It was not proper GL. Action. Because your action will send a message that your words cannot carry. So she didn't bring this pressure that made me feel, are you choosing me or you are looking for an economic deliverer? Marriage is not a poverty alleviation program. Some ladies are putting demands on young men that they couldn't put on their father. Your father is 65 and still broke and you expect a 25 year old man to have the whole world. Something is wrong with you. That is why you can marry a big economic disaster. He has money but you don't have him. So we went home. I'm telling you the story of why 150 naira is still on my finger. If I didn't tell you, you would not know. And this ring has gone to mo many more countries than Nigerians who are trying to jackpot. At least seven countries are on this finger. I'm telling you the truth. So when Makodi continued our lives, we were wearing that one. I ended up in Aberdeen for my master's. 
this ring was on, okay, not this one. That one is at home also. It's in the archive. I saw a ring on sale. 40 pounds. Instead of 700 and something pounds, the shop was closing down. I bought it. I got her some stuff too. She was wearing that one. Until like two years ago, one of our followers on social media asked for a ring size and sent us the one we're currently wearing. I've still not bought something worth it. But my marriage is deeper than the bands we wear. Do you understand what I'm saying? Action. The confidence I... We will not be in ministry if this woman had certain kind of demands. Landlord has told us in this Abuja, this very Abuja, not another one, I come and move you out of the house. We knew where the money went to. He went into the programs we're doing. You know when you prioritize what you are doing above, even remember, ah, then what you expected for rent failed you. But side by side, all that why? Seeing an attitude that says I'm with you, you know, Paul says, I've learned how to abound and to abase in all circumstances to be consistent. So you are not going to meet me and my character is going to be dependent on my economic state. When I talk about action, my dear brothers, if your trust is not in the Lord, you cannot be a romantic husband. Nigeria will just hit you one blow and your wife will just take the blow. So your capacity to be consistent in action is that your trust is in something bigger than you. I've seen former big men and trust in uncertain riches. Keep your action consistent through the spirit of God. Loving the one you married as per a demand of the covenant of marriage. Some of us need to go back and apologize. Because Nigeria has been doing you and you've been doing your spouse. Your action needs to be consistent. That brings me to the third and last uh, spice I want to talk about this morning. The spice of hope. If you cannot give hope to your spouse, forget it. That marriage is not going anywhere. Because Christian marriages fail through implosion more than divorce. They can't look at pastor and say they are walking away but they are not having a home. They can't look at church elders and say they are walking away but they are not having a home. They cannot look at their family members and say me that has been a Christian trying to evangelize all of you I'm tired of my marriage but they are still in their home imploded. Why? I meet too many people who don't know how to communicate hope. Do you know faith itself does not have a foundation on which to walk without hope? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You must create hope. So we're on this journey. We're not where we want to be. Like I tell people, if I say to my wife right now, because we do lots of outreaches, we do lots of travels, we're spending money all the time. If I say to my wife right now that we're traveling somewhere, she knows the economy ticket. If I there's engine, she knows I'll buy it. Because we're trying to do more with less. But let me tell you, no matter how, let me speak to the men now, no matter how your wife endures with you, if you leave her on the endurance plane, you will kill her. There must be something in her heart that tells her there's a future. Even God keeps you going that way. Because when you are going through a tough time, he doesn't necessarily have to pull you out of the tough time every time, but he shows you a picture. That's the place you are going to. There's somewhere we are headed. That's why you wake her up in the night and say, my dear wife, I love the endurance with which you have stood with me, but we're not going to stand here for too long. There's a place we're going to. She's seeing it in your effort. She's hearing it in the hope you're casting. That's how you also don't lose a girlfriend when you're in process. I'm a perfect example. When there's nothing to show, there's a future to demonstrate. There's a future. So I meet people who are so foolish. I mean, every time, every time you think endurance is a natural gift. It's not a gift. It's a face. That's why I, I get some question that amazes me. I'm like, who taught this girl? Who taught this one? You're dating somebody, meaningful relationship, going somewhere. He doesn't have a job for three years. He's been working hard. He's not a stupid person. He's not a useless person. He's making effort. Then somebody shows up because he has money. Oh, Tully, what do I do? Oh, I say, is he an economic transaction? Is he an economic transaction? I said, that's when to look at the man and say, you know, I've been standing with you and I'm not about to stop. I see the effort you're making. I see all you're doing. If I even find the opportunities, I'll share it with you. We are going to make it together. Because not just an economic transaction. Oh, when they want to now give trip you as a counselor, then I said, that's how I've been waiting for three years. Time is now on my side. I said, what do you know about time? What do you know about time? I saw a sad story yesterday, so painful. This lady was married in January. Her husband just passed. What do you know about time? What do you know about time? She posted it herself. Wrote so well of him. I felt the sharp pain in my heart. Just January. How do you cope with that? What do you know about time? What do you know about time? 
You can choose to marry the one you think has money right now and the very next day, the guy blows. All you come and say, that my former boyfriend just made money. What should I do? Get out. You are not worth it. But you know about time. I tell people who come to me, agitated, oh, Julie, I'm 35. Oh my God, oh my God. The simple question I ask them most times is, how long do you want to live on the average? Some of them will say 70, 80. I say minus 80 from 35. I know people who are multiple divorced before they are 40. What do you know about time? 80 minus 35. My math is poor, but that's some, somewhere around 45. I said, do you know how valuable 45 more years of your life is? So you're agitated at 35, not knowing that this thing you want to do is beyond a Saturday where people clap for you and you're happy. Some people are only happy on their wedding day. Afterwards, nothing left. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to have my own Saturday. Girls will say to me, I'm tired of being chief bridesmaid. man. I say, praise God, somebody trusts you to even be there. Do you want more chief bridesmaid this year? What if God orchestrated the man that should meet you in the next chief bridesmaid duty? Because they couldn't enter the promise because they murmured. Hope! Once hope is missing your relationship, there's problem. Oh. Ask any minister of the gospel, no matter how big he is, the reason he can keep going is that there's a hope of something the Lord is saying. And that's why God doesn't stop speaking. He keeps speaking. He keeps speaking. You must keep giving hope. You must keep talking about the future. That's why just to, if two of you are everything there is to your marriage, you are frustrated. There must be something to talk about. Hey, that's why some people, their children go off and it's over. Because the only thing that bound them together in speaking was the children. Nothing else to look forward to. No projects to talk about. No future to talk about. Nothing to pray about together. Nothing to stretch for. No. There must be hope. Whatever stage you are, promise something higher. And there are two dimensions of hope as a spice. I'll close with those. Number one, the prophetic dimension. No relationship or marriage can stay serviced if I cannot gist with you what the Lord is saying. There's a prophetic dimension of hope. That's why I wonder how believers stay married and the only thing that joins them is affection. Pressing sex. Oh, come on. Come on. How many times do you have sex? Even Red Devil will come sometimes and suspend one whole week. You know Red Devil? My God. Man, you fans. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. This one is for the married only. If you're not married, close your ear. So somebody travels and has been looking forward to meet his wife. Long journey and just comes back home. And the day is coming back home. Heavy Red Devil is present. My God. Wickedness in high places. <laughs> prophetic dimension of hope what's the Lord saying oh some of the greatest messages on my phone is my wife either sending what the Lord is saying to her or reminding me of prophetic words that are hanging over us bigger dimension it tells you this is more than just another woman this is somebody standing with me based on the prophetic you know on the prophetic power of God telling us things showing us stuff that keeps us bound together looking forward together number two dimension of hope promises if your spouse stops having something to look forward to with you, then you're actually technically useless. What else is left? I'll give you an example. We have two in secondary school, one at the borders of primary school, soon three in secondary school, soon two in university, then three in university, then they'll be out. So what next? Oh, I'm already talking to her when we no longer have responsibility of those three Nigerians. Because they are just a trust. They are not my life. And I've told them they should do quick and fall in their own love because they are distracting my love. <laughs> Want to go on vacation now is more expensive. In fact, our last vacation, my God, we were just like house help. They were the three on vacation, we were the ones helping them. <laughs> Such a distraction. So I speak to her about times that is just both of us again. Some people dread this because they actually have no relationship to fall back to. Hope! Speak about that day. Speak about that time where the burdens we currently carry because of the face where we are at will no longer exist. Where we are just serving people already cannot see themselves in their husband's life in present or in future. Let me say this to you. If you are not intentional, your spouse will stop being exciting. Too much pressure. Marriage is designed to test your capacity to be intentional. That's why you make promises while acting now. 
so much counseling coming from new parents. Why? They just entered waters that they could not believe. My God, I thought marriage was all about. Have you seen those ladies that will tell you what they thought pregnancy was and what it really is? Pregnancy now your mate. When he handles your reality. <laughs> hey! When husband look at wife. Is this the wife I married or I should expect another? <laughs> speak a lot about women's body. Have you seen women that married men with six pack but right now they are living with amusement park? My God, from whoop to whoop. Have you seen it? Hope! What does the future hold? What am I still doing here? So that I can stop myself. I hope with these few points of mine. Grace Place, can we celebrate God's gift to us? practical wisdom the spice of words the spice of uh-huh, uh-huh, you see yourselves the spice of words yeah the spice of and then the spice of hope these three and then under hope we have prophetic and and promises what we have heard as easy as they sound is the spice that you need and let's celebrate pastor for this session um, we'll take a few questions I believe your questions are ready are they please pass the questions to the ushers near you we have 10-15 minutes for this um, and then we will go from here um, Pastor and um, Pastor Mrs. Please join us. Pastor Julia, please join us. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. We have questions quickly, 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 quickly. Praise God. Pastor Lillian, any question coming in? Okay, let me start with my own question. Let me ask my, let me start with my question why we expect questions. For a man, does any man here feel, feel attacked this morning? Any man feels, Reverend, does go bring somebody who can't insult us this morning. But how do you know um, on whom you can make the investment of saying at last. All right. Um, as children of God, yeah, too, yeah. As children of God, um, we are not self. Just like when the Bible says, when we see him, we'll be like him. That's Jesus now. Now, why would we know it's even him and also be like him? Is that we have been taught in his way to know him. Mm-hmm. All right? So, um, she will fit a picture when you see her. Number three, there will be a mutual liking. Now, people often are bothered that people that they want do not want them. Now, marital love is not the type where one person will carry the other person. There must be mutuality. So you cannot be wanting somebody that doesn't want you and think that, you know, you can craft anything. So they yeah. say, I think my love can carry us. <laughs> we love him because he first loved us. His love is perfected when we receive it. Yes. All right? So Christianity itself runs on that principle. So the guy needs to see that this effort I am making or this direction I'm pursuing at, there's mutuality. If those three things are not in place, then I, I don't see what you should be doing with that lady. Okay, so the first thing is to have that word in your spirit, that receiving, 
the second thing is to see that person in, in, the, picture. The, in the picture so the adjoining question is have you seen the picture so clearly that you can identify her in the picture is that correct sir am i correct yes sir, sir? Yes, sir. another question Sorry, can we yes answer, please ma'am ask please answer that from the lady's perspective yes please uh because when when i was young and i was um asking i had this question in my heart how will i know that this person is my husband and I was expecting maybe I would hear a voice of the Spirit of God talking to me, in, you know, and I'll, it would be like a, a spectacular kind of um, situation. But it was not. You would hear it by the leading of the Spirit. When I met him and, um, you know, things started tending in that direction, uh, how did I know that he was the one? When he spoke to me, the Spirit of God in me agreed that this is the one. And the more I... Um, it was like an inner knowing. Yeah. And the more I prayed about it, all directions pointed here. There were so many people asking for my hand in relationship back then. And I told God one thing. I don't want to um, waste my emotion. So I wanted the first person that I say yes to, to actually be the one. And he's, he, he's the first and he's the last. Oh. You know, and <laughs> Alpha and Omega. <laughs> you are the first and the last Adam. <laughs> so for ladies, you don't need to test every water to know if this is the one. Yes. The Holy Spirit is right inside of you yes. as a child of God. And when you go before him in prayer, he will make everything clear. You will see clearly. There were so many options, but the light of God was here. And I knew that this is where God wants me to be. So take it up in prayer. It's not a cliche when they say, go and pray about it. Yeah. Actually, take time to go before God in prayer. Yeah. Because the decision of a life partner is not what you should make lightly. It is a lifetime affair. You don't want to spend it managing or in suffering or in torment. God wants you to enjoy marriage. So, actually take time to pray. The more you pray, you will receive a confirmation in your spirit. And the things that God will uh, confirm around you, maybe using your mentors or elders around you yeah. to make you know that this is the person that you should go with. And the next thing is what they say. Don't be carried away with emotions, but actually listening to the conversation the person is making. Because you are not marrying the, the person's physique. You are actually marrying their uh, mindset. Ideology. So you need to hear what they are saying. I, I, is it in line with what God is saying? As in, is this man actually truly God-fearing, born again? Listen closely. Is this the person I want to share the rest of my life with? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A critical part of this is that your Holy Ghost in you must be walking that's it that's what i hear the you must invest time in praying um sometimes you will not hear the audible voice saying um this is your husband his name is pastor truly no but that rest that peace that's you start seeing yourself in that picture as you pray praise the lord question number two sir and ma what do you do when you marry a man or a woman who does not defend you or make you feel valued praise god we'll take two more questions two okay. more questions yes sir thank you sir um we we have this situation all the time where people have a concern yeah and it's not it's not uncommon because nobody married a perfect person. It's just that there are degrees of imperfection. Now, this imperfection in this sense is what you have mentioned. Like I said when I was teaching, wisdom is the issue. Because a lot of times, people actually are acting to the level of their knowing. Yeah. They don't know better. For instance, I kept saying even before my mom went to, to be with the Lord, um, Meanwhile, I'm, I'm from a properly broken home. My parents are separated. I was eight, divorced. I was ten. About four mothers. So wow. you don't inherit a good marriage. You craft it, right? <laughs> uh -huh. And the way you craft it is harm. Going to tell you about this answer. Yeah. Is his exposure has not changed? If I if I am producing like where I'm from, this woman will be out of this place. You get what I mean? But something changed in the software. 
All right? Something changed in the mindset. Just like uh, Romans 12 tells us, that we should not be conformed to this world and its cultures, but be transformed by the renewing, renewing of the mind. mind. Now, what do you do for that person? Because now you are the one asking. If, if, it was he, uh, if he was the one asking, I would say this to him, I will say, read through and so books, do this and expose your mind. Now, the first thing you need to deal with is that the person who needs help often does not know they need help. And the way to now begin to make them assess help is by prayer. Now, see, when Julia and I speak, oh, we go to some place, they say we're not practical enough because we go back to prayer. But I'm going to give you a precedent of prayer in scripture. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan has asked for you. And Peter, you know what? Satan is actually going to have you. You will deny me. Yeah. Jesus should have looked at him then, using the analogy of his power, you are such a wicked soul. You are terrible. After all I did for you, Peter, do you remember when your mother-in-law was sick? I gave her life. You are wicked. You could not catch fish. You start giving history. But Jesus said, you know what, Peter? I'm not going to focus on your denier. Me, I have prayed for you. Jesus believed so much in his prayer that he said, when you are restored, in essence, he expected a restoration because of his prayer. Oh, wow. Now, that man needs intercession. But very often, we replace the heart of intercession with the heart of anger. That's what Jesus could conquer at that time. Because Jesus could have been offended. But what he did was to say, Peter, I prayed for you. All right? So that man needs intercession because until you begin to see the real devil, you make him the enemy. Yeah. Right? Now, how does that kind of intercession work? God may just bring the right teacher his way. God may just bring the right book his way. God may just make him sit, just listen to radio and pastor comes up on radio. Who is this pastor? I don't know him. Then you make three statements and the person like, wait, oh, I've been abusing my wife. And deliverance comes to him. So, very often, just because we don't see how the intercession will work in practical terms, we become discouraged to pray. So, you first of all need to address the devil of the ignorance behind him so that now, I'll say this, three things that your intercession will do, I'll stop there. Three things. Number one, your intercession will suspend judgment. Because yes. the man is deserving of consequences by his action. So intercession is how God gets permission to intercept them so that judgment does not come to them. Number two, your intercession will bring a softening towards the word of God. So God will begin to touch the heart. God will begin to touch the heart. Number three, your intercession will bring divine orchestration for the help he needs to come. Yeah. So somebody may just force him into church this morning and he didn't want to go. Or he has been coming to church but the heart is not soft. That item too. You just realize that pastor makes some statements and the man's like, wait, oh, pastor can preach like this. No, pastor has been preaching well since 1900. It's the heart that was not ready. Yeah. But intercession has now softened the heart to receive the orchestration. Wisdom. Right, so you need to pray for this person. Yes. And to quickly add to that, there's room for conversation in marriage. You can sit with the person and discuss things, but the attitude must be right. There should be no bitterness or anger in your heart when you are making that. Because when you are praying about something and you are reacting, it's like using your reaction to cancel your prayer. So if you're going to discuss about it, make sure it is the right time because they are, they are, uh, it's not when somebody is agitated, you know, um, focusing on a different thing that you bring up such conversations. Make sure it is a conducive atmosphere and then raise the issue in a... a a reconciliatory yes, posture. Yes, without bitterness or anger. Sorry, Pastor, I need to add. You know, and wisdom needs to go in. When you are dealing with people's extended family, which they do not know is now extended family by reason of marriage. Because the day I took this oath of marriage, everybody in my life became extended. That's why without a biological father and mother of his own, God took his earliest opportunity to define family relationship in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. He said, for this reason, a man shall leave father and mother. Who was Adam's father and mother? He was speaking <laughs> through Adam into time into so that all of us can collect wisdom. Even now. though Adam did not have a biological father and mother of his own. Profound. All right? Profound. So in that circumstance, when you are having this conversation, what you must note at this point is that they are emotionally invested in their extended family. That's why they are acting the way they are acting. So you don't use certain words on them. You don't attack his mother. That is his mother. The source of this problem is that he thinks that his mother is queen mother while you, you are small girl. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you don't, you're just like, you know, you, you use wisdom. Mama is such a good woman. I can just imagine why you're so close to mama. Every time she advises me, I know your heart now is it, God forbid. Anytime she advises me, I, I, I see how you got invested in her. I mean, it is well. It is well. Wisdom. <laughs> you know, you started by saying it's a sense issue. Um, 
those questions plenty. But I, I, I promise two more. But just to add to what um, Pastor and Pastor Julia said, we must understand that marriage, you, started, you said something that is very unconventional at the beginning, that marriages made in heaven still fail on earth. Did we hear that? Did we hear that? That many marriages that are now broken began with God. Profound thoughts. Now, what we are sharing today is to help us um, and that how we must seek wisdom in prayer. Do not underestimate the power of prayer. Let me share an exa- an ex- a personal experience with you. My definition of what I learned as love from my father is if you are sick now, love is... What's wrong with you? I don't know. I'm feeling funny. Okay, take. Go sort yourself out. You get it? So when I got married, um, my wife is not feeling well. I say, ah, what's wrong with you? I'm not feeling fine. I also respond that way. Oh yeah, take. Go and sort yourself out. And then she's expecting more, but I don't have it. I don't even know it. You see, the wisdom part. So I went to, I went for a program, um, international ministers conference. And I was returning with a pastor friend, an old pastor friend, where I've known him from when we were teenagers. And he was told me, he said, see, emoji, you know what I've just discovered? I said, what? He said, the easiest way to experience breakthrough in life is to love your wife terribly love her love her in such a way that she'll begin to suspect your love i said hey. explain to me say i love my wife to the point that she was crying started crying say why are you loving me like this why are you loving me like this he said the moment that i started doing that business picked ministry picked everything started working well for me i said hey give me more practical steps is it like you're going now buy her something as you're doing now if she has a need solve the need carry her matter on your head now what that did for me could have been her praying for me. And then when I came back, loving my wife was not, became to me, because whether I would like it or not, we are men, we are business people, became more of profiting, a business strategy for increase. Yes, I'm a businessman. So, ah, I need to buy this woman something. When I buy something for her, she's feeling all mushy mushy. I've solved the critical problem. But I also make profit in life. So we see. So simply by understanding, getting that wisdom, I became a better version of myself because she prayed for me. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. Don't pick fight with family members. Men love their mothers. Especially when their mothers are, were there. Is structure. Women love their fathers. Till my father passed, he was still calling my other sister, Chichi Love. She's older than me with three years. She may be watching. Chichi Love. And I'm like, what's wrong with you people? People are adults. That's the way it is. However, don't pick that fight. The more you get wisdom, one day your husband will wake up and see you, in pastor's words, as the queen mother. He will see you that way. Are we wiser? Um, number three question. In a l- <laughs> okay, this is just a yes or no or something. In a relationship, who should love more? <laughs> um, if you read First Peter, <laughs> if you read First Peter three, the Bible says, "Like wives, uh, likewise, wives, be submissive to your own husbands as unto the Lord." It goes forth. To say not by too much talking or adorning yourself, but you know by your actions, you know you would, uh, you know, teach the man to even if he doesn't obey the word to do so, you com- you, you convert him by your actions. And if you back up to chapter two, towards the end of chapter two, it talks about the way Christ laid down Himself for the church, as in He wasn't uh, going to the cross with a grumbling spirit or with he he laid down his life willingly then in chapter 3 it says likewise Likewise. 
So he's saying the way Jesus Christ gave up himself for the church, that is the willingness with which a woman should be ready to be submissive. That, for a woman, that's our, our, our own way of loving. Love, love comes, comes easy for the, uh, for the ladies. But submission hmm, is another story. So God is emphasizing that point. But that love and submission is the balance that God requires in, uh, you know, from, uh, the equation for marriage to excel. And now look at the man. It says that as Christ laid down his life for the church, the way he loves her, the way he keeps washing her with the word, that is God's expectation for the man. My, the men also should do likewise in loving their wife, just as Christ loved the church. So in essence, it's saying that do the same. As in for each, the death of Jesus Christ on the, church, uh, on the cross was giving up himself totally. So, whether it is the man or the woman, it's the same thing. There's no thermometer or gauge for gauging it. But like Julia said, the beginning of chapter 3 of 1 Peter is likewise or in the same manner. Now, I'll do a quick rundown. Um, verses 1 to 5, focus on the woman in the likewise. Verse 7 goes back to the man, dwell with her with understanding, so that your prayers be not hindered. In case you are wondering why pastor says it's transactional, I don't want any prayer hindrance. I've read that verse in all translation. Everyone still ends with so that your prayer will not be hindered. Now, please go to verse 8. You will now see two of them in the same boat. Verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion. Or finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. In essence, agape them. Yes. When we say women love more, we actually say women feel you more. Because they deal more feelings. Alright? Um, love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted. Now, this is the letter to all. Yes. Be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Next verse. Don't repay evil for evil. That's to both. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do and he will grant you his blessing. Do you know what I mean? So, both of us are in the booth. Alright? Don't uh, don't put uh, this... uh, Both of us are in the booth. And guess what? This is why Peter missed Jesus totally when Jesus resurrected. If you read that scripture and look at the original text, Jesus said, Peter, do you agape me? Peter responded, I feel you, you. Yeah. Oh, Jesus was getting agitated. Yeah. I'm not talking about feelings. Yeah. It's feelings that made you walk away to go and catch fish. Yes. He asked a second time, Do you agape me? The Jesus, guy said, I feel, I feel you. 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 Yeah. Ah, by this time, Jesus don't tire. Do you agape me? <laughs> get the point. Do you love me beyond? So once, once we get away from the feeling zone, all of us have equal responsibility in Christ. Equal. Praise God. Praise God. Clap, 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 clap. How can you come back from a situation where your spouse already feels you do not encourage them somewhat like your words doesn't seem to cut it? Strategy. A lot of things that God does on earth are ineffective because we don't follow a strategy. There's a strategy. When you have shown yourself in a certain way, you need superior wisdom to restore. It is harder to restore than to originally build. Yeah. Because right here, right now, my words go in a certain way because of history of how the words have been. Now, what am I saying about strategy? One thing you must note at this kind of time is to go to James chapter 1 verse 5. He said, does any of you need or lack wisdom? Let him ask. You need to go in the place of prayer and say, Lord, there's a particular wisdom I need. I'll give you an example. My wife always says this and I totally agree. Nobody can teach you to be as romantic as the Holy Spirit. So, we, we used to have one car and in my house, once it's one car, it belongs to the wife because it's easier for me to navigate than to put her under that stress. So, I got another car and it was so lovely, but the feeling was, okay now, you have had cars since now, at least let me finally be cruising. And she loved this car, I didn't think of giving her at all. It didn't even cross my mind. I mean, you are still fine, I'm fine. Let's go on. We'll still have more said that we'll be choosing what to drive. So we're at a dinner, and as I went to the car to pick something, I, I forgot something in the car. As I reached there, I just said, give this key to your wife. 
Uh-huh. Still, is just three months old. What is going on here? This girl has been fine. What's this exchange for? So, quick obedience. I went back straight. It was an end of year dinner and did my hand like this. This car from today is yours. Once we get back home, we move each other's things out of each other's cars. This is now your own. Guess what happened? Oh my God. Baby, what kind of man are you? Oh my God. She didn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You're so sweet. Oh my God. Blah, blah, blah. She started sending her sister's message. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> One strike. Not two. Well, one. one strike. <laughs> one strike. Ask God. I mean, it was, they, I just opened boot to carry something. Hand it over. I just went back. Pium. She's still under the influence of that incident. Look at just influence. <laughs> so ask God for specific wisdom. wisdom. Number two, do some things you have done in the past in a different way. Yeah. For instance, some of you have not been able to actually sit and talk. Go and pour your heart out in WhatsApp. You know why? It's very difficult for a person not to read a message left for them and to read it more than once. Nothing will be lost in the process. You will sit back. You will type the message. You will edit it. There are messages you take three hours editing. You copy so that I don't lose it. You rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it. By the time you drop it, even though the person comes behaving angry, something is entering. Yeah. Something is entering. They use the power of consistency. Now, the reason why this person is finding it difficult to believe the things you are saying is that you have been consistently not consistent. Now, they need to see that you are not just doing it maybe because you want sex or maybe because you want a particular favor. They want to see that this is coming from a place that is not transactional. It's coming from a real place. So, what do you do is use the power of consistency because anytime you break trust, it takes effort to rebuild it. When they now see that there's a consistent pattern of that encouragement and all, they will now realize that uh, this is not just transactional, this is not one-off, this is what this person intends to do. So God will give you strategy. Praise God. And to add to that quickly, you are meant to be a lifelong law, uh, student of your spouse, as in study them every day. What are the things that appeal most to this person in terms of uh, their love language? Like, there are times I would be so exhausted, as in from work, kids, and my husband would just say, just leave everything. Go and rest. Go and sleep. By the time I wake up in the morning, everything is washed. The, the plates, everything. And he, has, he would have set up everything for me to just walk into the kitchen <laughs> and just uh, arrange the kids' lunch. And we you don't understand this thing she's saying because we went three years. We just ended that by employing somebody who comes to clean. When we decided to stop having maids, we went three years with just us and the children with the busy ministry, busy practice that I have, busy job that she has. I mean, it was neck breaking at some point. That's the honest truth. So our house was our our responsibility. We live in a big house, like cleaning, washing. See, let me tell you, if you don't get domestic as a man, particularly when you have not gotten help for your wife, you actually look like a wicked person. That's the truth. You will just kill her. You think school runs is funny. Do it for one week. Prepare children for school and you will see. You know, children come in stored with foolishness. I didn't say it, the Bible says it. You know, when you buy a phone, there are some apps that come with it. Children, the Bible says foolishness is installed in the heart of a child. It's training that uninstalls it gradually. Do you understand? So when your wife is dealing with... Some men think, even people you call housewife, they are not housewife. They are domestic staff that are not being paid. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is well. So when they see this level of sacrifice, as in whatever you say takes on a greater meaning, a deeper depth, and, you know, uh, a greater impact. Praise the Lord. Are we wiser? Okay, I said two questions, but... You see me, I don't listen to my wife. I mean, man. Well, she sends me one. If I don't read it, I will go home. So let me read one. Some men believe that paying bills is an act of love. Hey, God. Jesus. (laughs) Okay. Some men believe that paying bills is an act of love. So once the bills are paid, they don't owe their wives anything else. Not even to celebrate her birthday. The man needs to come to the school of marriage. He doesn't know nothing. Try. Jack doesn't know. If you don't pay the bills, you're an irresponsible person. When you pay the bills, you just met your responsibility. Marriage has not started. 
Even if you didn't marry her, you pay rent. <laughs> you will buy food and eat. The children are our children. If I let me was in your case. <laughs> when the Bible spoke about the infidel, he was not talking about a man taking care of his house. He was talking about a person taking care of their extended family. It's household. Go and read First Timothy. Yes, household. Read it in multiple translations. He's talking about cousins, nephews, nieces. Yes. If God can hold a child of God accountable to extended family, how much responsibility is he holding you to meeting basic needs of your home? When you are done paying the bills, God now asks, are you married? That man has not started answering his wife. Now, that is even an insult to sound that way of a woman God gave you and called helper. Because you think you have done her a favor by paying bills, but you have done yourself this favor by not sitting with her and taking the strength God placed in her. Problem. So, even in the middle of paying that bills, where is motivation coming from? Where is strength coming from? Who is talking to me and saying, whoa, what a man I married? Who is talking to me and saying, we are taking the nations of the earth? You know, the reason a lot of marriages are that boring is that there's no higher purpose binding them than being married. There, there needs to be something higher. I'm her nurturer. When we got married, this woman, if I, one of the reasons she wanted to resist me was because of the way I served the Lord, I was a suspect of those kind of people who will leave school and go and be preaching up and down. So she asked me, now pastor, you won't be. She hated the spotlight. Let me tell you, I take credit through God. I boast in the Lord. This woman is seated here holding this mic, ready to speak because I nurtured. It's yes. not about paying bills. Early days of our ministry life, number one, she didn't want to do. When she began to even manage to do, give my wife, Mark, five minutes later, take your team back. <laughs> but right now in our classes, especially our monthly classes online, give Julia one hour, prepare extra 20 minutes. I'm telling you, you will add time. She must add time. She will get into it. I saw this woman as a teacher before she embraced it. I saw this woman as an intercessor and counselor before she agreed. So, what did I have to do? I had to go beyond bills. I had to sit and talk to her. My wife still organizes annual conferences and quarterly conferences and biannual conferences right in our bedroom. Baby, those things you, need, you used to tell me, I want to hear it one more time. Can we talk? Hello? Hello. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? I give you Habakkuk. Write the vision, make it plain that he may run that it. This is my runner. This is the caster of the vision. It's not about paying. What is paying rent? Is well. Oh yeah, sorry now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody get that response right? All right. You want to add something, ma'am? You're good. See, so it's not be as if you want to add to. It. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are we wiser? Are we better? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and give himself.